Hi and welcome, Sean from Drones Under Podcast. Danny's behind the camera helping out. Thanks, Danny. I'm with Trent from D1 Store. Welcome, Trent. How's it going, Sean? Very good, man. Very good. Very exciting here. <laughs> we got the man who has all the knowledge today. Absolutely. So, um, Trent, um, DJI dock in front of us mm. with the M30T. So, can you give our viewers and listeners just an overview of mm. what we're looking at here? What so, so, it's a pretty unique product. It's fitting into where we need remote drone operations, where it's hard to reach places, let's yep. say telecommunication inspections, rural areas. And it's going to enable us uh, beyond visual line of sight. So we have operators uh, in an office, in a location, in a city, going to inspect areas uh, far away. Yeah. So range wise, when the drone actually takes off. Yep. What are we looking at? Maximum? So we're getting 7K. Okay. And that's a bit shorter from the standard M30 because we're accounting from the distance from the dock we need to return to base. Yep. Whereas the standard M30 can hop between other controllers and operators in the field. Right. Okay. So what are we looking at here? We've got obviously the covers that are now obviously opened. Yep. Um, and then we've got the M30 sitting on and there's a couple of guide rails to mm. ensure it's locked up. Yep. So and this is the M30 dock version. Yep. The difference is uh, we have inputs for the chargers in the back legs of it. Right. So when the rails come, it can align the dock, it can align the drone, start charging. Okay. And how long does it take for it to be fully charged? About 25 minutes. 25 minutes. And flight time? Uh, 45? 45 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Okay. Yep. With a range of seven kilometers, right? Or max range of seven yep. kilometers. Okay, and as far as sensors are concerned, we obviously got a, a wind sensor yeah. fairly obvious here. So we got wind, we got wind speed, camera for inspecting the dock, making sure there's no obstructions when we're opening and closing. We got water sensors. Yeah. Of course, we've got internal humidity sensors and that's coming into the aircon system, heat system inside of it. Yeah, so okay. we've covered off telco towers. So I presume um, mining, Gas and oil could be yep. some sectors that people could consider yep. this. Gas and oil, yep. solar inspections, have it map the whole acreage in uh, just automation, have it go yep. day by day. Those photos will come on the Flight Hub 2, which is going to be the main control system that people operate it from. Yep. And people can even develop their own apps for it. So pulling in all the photos, automatically inspecting the solar panel arrays. And, you know, my background in telco, I spent two decades. I remember you can make this, lots of assumptions on what's actually sitting on site. Mm. You get, you know, you could spend several days traveling there and find out your assumptions mm -hmm. are incorrect. So this could be a very useful tool where you can fly this remotely, inspect the asset, and you know what's actually installed there, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so it could be a great solution for that. Um, and as far as... Um, skills to fly this you know is this you know someone sitting remotely what what type of training would they require yeah of course so people are going to be trained with uh repl of course yeah then the remotes are beyond visual line of sight exemptions okay extensions awesome uh, and i'm sure if they reach out to you you can guide them on what yep. they need to do um so we covered sensors as well um let's go back to some of the specs so weight wise so weight without a drone, we're looking about 105 kilo. Okay. And uh, it's going to come open to about a meter square. We want a bit more area to set up the dock. Yep. Uh, the setup and installation looking like a bit of a concrete block. Electrician will come out and install this for us. Awesome. And clearly, um, when you're putting into a concrete block, mm. what other types of security would it need? Yeah. So if you're in a remote area, you won't need too much uh, security around it. You won't have any visitors. Yeah. Uh, some people are putting them onto roofs if they're more built up areas. Otherwise, a bit of fencing insulation is recommended. Right. And it's obviously got its own camera to yep. you, so you can check on it anyway. So operating this, we've got obviously a controller sitting mm. there. Um, someone's gone and got their training with the REPL. Um, they got their BV loss. What else? Mm. Uh, what are the other useful tools that comes together with yeah, the solution? So the controller, we're only going to need that on the first time setup yep. when it's installation. We'll set up a safe landing point as an alternative zone yep. if, I, if anything's blocking this. Um, but all the operations, therefore, will be done with Flight Hub 2, where okay. we can build flight routes. We can import flight routes from flights we've flown before 
just upload from the controller. So coming in from either direction, automation, human flight route, we'll bring that down, bring it into a task, yep. and we can fulfill those tasks throughout the day on a schedule. Right. Sounds exciting. And a Flight Hub 2, is that something as well you can help people get set up, right? Yes. Yep. So Flight Hub 2 is going to work with the Mavic 3 Enterprise as well, the Mavic 3 Thermal. And those drones, as well as the 30, can start building uh, 2.5D maps of the area yep. and give us a bit more information to work on. Okay. Um, Emergency-wise, given these are remote operations, mm. what type of um, capability does this have? So as, let's say, uh, you know, birds, mm. and you might, you know, is, is there a way and it's going to run an autonomous mission? Is there some sort of sensors that it's going to actually identify them? Go, okay, there's potentially a hazard out in mid-air. Mm. Um, yeah, know. so it's using all the same stair safety sensors that the 30 has. Okay. If anything's blocking its way, it's going to deviate uh, smartly, okay. uh, trying to continue its mission. If it can't fulfill its mission or attempt a landing, yeah. if anything's blocking that, back to safe design. Awesome. And um, landing zone, there are abilities to set up alternate landing zones, yeah. right? So we've got an RTK module coming out of the station itself. Yeah. Uh, and that will allow us to pinpoint accurately to find where this is and where our alternative landing spot is. Right. Sounds very cool. Mm. Anything else we want to cover off, Trent? Yeah, so the capabilities are massive. Like some of the test cases we've seen so far, people are out in Norway, heavy snow. It just rips the snow off. It does its mission like it needs to do. Yeah. And IP55 rated, it's very, very good. So it can take a beating of rain. Yeah, you can fly this in the rain. Yeah. Even if the door's open, rain's pouring into it. There's, there's mechanisms that will expel the water, set to go. Yeah. Everything in there is entirely waterproof. So uh, maintenance-wise, mm. what do you recommend? So we'll have some maintenance operators supporting the drone. They can come out, check everything's in good working condition, yep. and that'll be supplied over a one year, two year, and just make sure everything's in working order. Yep, okay, sounds good. Um, and going back to the installation side of things, mm. um, we obviously talked about the setup. Uh, from inquiry with mm. yourselves, what are some of those steps that we, uh, and time frame to yeah. get it complete and activated? So people can come to us, uh, Enterprise D1 store. We'll get them out a uh, site survey plan and we can start bringing information back and forward about what's the, the right use case for, what their site looks like, how we can get it installed. Yeah. And we can get this over the next uh, month or so yeah. and uh, probably up and running in about month two. Yeah, so they don't have to worry about installation that's something you can help them sort out. Covered. Yep. communications as well right because yep. you need the right communication that's something you're going to cover as well yep as well as all the licensing licensing awesome so best thing to do is get in touch with enterprise at d1store.com.au yep and i'm sure trent and the team will help out uh thank you trent for your time and um very exciting products so thanks for coming down thank you